All right, Defender family, I'm Brigadier General Tom Sherman, and I'm honored to be your newest Director of Security Forces. I've been sitting in the job for just a little bit over a month right now, and it has been inspiring to see just all of the incredible work that is going in across our career field and the things that you're doing to ensure that our bases are secured and well defended. In doing that, many of the people that are going to be receiving this message today I've had the pleasure of serving with over a number of assignments over the course of the past few years. For some of you, this is going to be the first time that you've had a chance to meet me. And in doing so, what I really want to do is just introduce myself to you, let you know a little bit about my background, let you know a little bit about the things that are important to me, our values, and then I want to spend a little time talking about some areas that I think we're going to focus on over the next few months as we kind of continue my immersion in the career field. I'm originally from Corona, California, was born and raised, and I grew up in a family of very humble means. But what my parents taught me growing up was a sense of service and taught me these blue collar values that if I just rolled up my sleeves and put in the work that anything was possible. And because I had this really strong desire to serve ever since I was a child, I found out about the Air Force Academy when I was in seventh grade and I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to fly for the United States Air Force. And so I worked all the way through junior high and high school to get to that point. In living that dream while I was there, I had the fortunate opportunity to meet the absolute most wonderful person in my entire life my wife Lori. Lori and I dated while I was a cadet at the academy and what was great is Lori's a chief's daughter and so during that time we were dating around their dining room table I learned so much about the value of the enlisted force what our civilians do from us from her mom and what that did in me is it changed my perspective and it lit a fire on this desire to work in a career field where I'd be working with people and so I made a very very important decision in the fall of 1994 and I actually turned down the opportunity to compete for a pilot slot and in doing so, what I wanted to do was I wanted to go into security police. I was told I was making the biggest mistake of my career, but I will tell you, after 27 years of service, 20 different jobs, and 17 duty locations, I could not be more proud to be a part of this family. I have watched you do amazing things in all weather conditions, in all environments, and in war and in peace. And what that also set for me is it established some very important values that we have as a career field. And these values are things that I think make us stronger. And so what I want to do is just discuss a few areas that I think run counter to the values of us as defenders and the values of us as airmen. We don't have time for us versus them. It could be as simple as the back office versus flight or active duty versus guard and reserve or civilian versus uniform. But when we start drawing those lines between us, we become weak. We lose our sense of synergy and our ability to work on jobs together and get things done as a team. We also don't have a place for bigotry, discrimination, racism, sexism. If we can't be next to our brother and sister standing in guard mount and not judge them by the color of their skin, their ethnic background, their religious beliefs, their, their people who they love and how they identify, that tears us apart as a sense of synergy. Everybody in our organization comes with a story. They come with something that makes them unique. And the diversity that we have makes us strong as a career field. And we need to rely on that strength to be effective in what we're doing and take care of each other. And the last thing is, is we don't have a place for domestic violence. We don't have a place for sexual assault, sexual harassment. Those are the very things that erode the trust in us. And trust is the one thing that allows us to be strong and stay together and build a sense of unity. I want to take a moment to kind of tell you a story as to why these things are important. So I'm going to take you back to the fall of 2012, Bagram Airfield, Afghanistan. I was the Defense Force Commander of the 455th Expeditionary Security Forces Squadron out there, and your fellow defenders were covering 220 miles of battle space throughout Parwan Province. They were doing amazing things, and our airmen were doing everything from village engagements to direct action to support to our counters and partners. But what we were also doing was noticing that we were having some destabilization in the battle space. There was a village that was close by that we needed to do some shaping operations with. And so we got one of our patrols together, and that patrol mounted up, did all their pre-combat checks, and they departed to go on the objective. It was a four-truck convoy, and as that truck was rolling, there was a location that they needed to get to for their objective rally point. As they were going there, there was one terrain feature that they needed to cross, and that terrain feature was a valley that went over a small rise in the hill. And as they're trucking through to get to the objective, the first truck goes over the valley, over the rise, no problem. Second truck goes through, over the top, no problem. Third truck through, over the top, no problem. Patrol is moving on fine. But when the fourth truck crossed that gullet, boom, off went the IED. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew if they hit the last truck in the formation, the three would be over the rise and they would lose sight of them. And the damage was severe. The explosion was so big, it burst the hull of that MRAP. It caused a lot of damage inside the vehicle, completely rendered it inoperable. 
But what it also did is it injured our fellow defenders that were inside that. And so I want to tell you who was inside that MRAP that day. Our driver, active duty, Asian American. Our truck commander, National Guard, European American. Our turret gunner, African American, National Guard, and despite her injury, she stayed on the gun the entire time. Our radio telephone operator was Air Force Reserve European American background, and our two gunners in the back were both of Hispanic origin. They got tossed around the back, had some traumatic brain injury, but they were doing otherwise well. And they were out there all by themselves. They were injured, and they were alone. If they had been driving a wedge with us versus them, if they had been judging each other by their color of their skin, their ethnic background, their beliefs or how they identify, if they had been harassing each other on Bagram Airfield, they would not have survived that night. That night. But they did, and they cared about each other as family, and they respected each other as family. And as a family, they survived, and they all made it home. The reason why I tell you that is I've seen the power of what happens when those values are put into play. And I've seen what happens when we look at each other as family. And that's the thing that is going to allow us to survive. That's the thing that's going to make us be effective. And that's the thing that is going to take us into the future. The world is changing around us, defenders. We're watching a change in the global environment. We're watching the rise of peer competition. And it's going to cause us to have to think differently. It's going to cause us to operate in small teams in dispersed locations where our reliance on each other as family is going to be pivotal, not only to generate air power, but it's going to be pivotal for our own survival and success. In doing that, I want to take that opportunity to talk about how this global environment is changing and what are the, some of the things that I'm looking at. These are questions that I'm asking myself as we go through, and the staff is helping to get me up to speed. And there'll be things that I'll be asking our commanders across the force to get some input on. The first area I'm looking at is our culture. How do we identify ourselves? How do we look at ourselves? What are the things that we value? What does it mean to be a defender? And what are the things that motivate us? That'll help me help paint a picture of where I think we need to go as a career field and what our strengths lie in. Additionally, when we talk about culture, it's also about humanity. And it's the humanity of carrying each other through mental illness. It's those of us that are struggling. How do we reach out that hand and grab them up and support those that are struggling? So I want to make sure that we're focusing on mental health, and I want to make sure that we're focusing on suicide. That is a national problem. And then finally, the area that we think that we bring into this sense of culture is many of you have got spouses, partners, significant others, and families that are important to you. Those people that are important to you are important to us as well. So what can we do as a career field to make those people that you care about feel welcome and know that they're a part of this Defender family. The next area that I'm looking at is asking a fundamental question. What is air base defense? And it may sound silly, but really when we're looking at is what is required of us in this new environment? What is required of us to be flexible? What is required of us to be innovative in how we're managing defense? And what does defense look like if we find ourselves in a distributed environment with a very small footprint? And so we're asking those questions. And I'm diving into the capabilities that we need and the training that's going to be required to ensure that all of us are well prepared and confident to take on this next fight. The last thing that I'm looking at is really how do we take some amazing, excellent ideas that go throughout this Air Force. And we're seeing them in squadrons. Many of you have got ideas getting innovation funds. And we're seeing technology and equipment come to fruition. In doing that, how do we look at all of these innovative ideas we have and start to turn them into systems of record? And what I mean by systems of record are what are things that we can apply in technologies and equipment across our force. These technologies and equipment are only going to enhance our ability to conduct and operate in a base defense environment. And in doing so, how do we then turn that into appropriate resourcing so that we can sustain it? How do we do proper acquisition, requirements development, capability development, so that we're not having bases throughout this globe have completely dissimilar equipment that doesn't talk to each other? My staff is already starting to work on this, and they're giving me a lot of background, but I know that there are phenomenal ideas throughout your leadership throughout the force, and many of you. And so I ask you, as we take this journey to look and determine what are the things that are important that we develop ourselves into the defense force that needs to be for the future, know that we'll be reaching out and asking questions. Again, I cannot begin to tell you how absolutely proud I am to stand among you. For the years that I've been wearing this beret, I know that the Air Force depends on you. It depends on you for defense. It depends on you for mission execution. But I will tell you on a personal level, I believe in us. 
There is no limit to what we can do. There is no way we can undervalue the impact that we make to every base across this Air Force and how much air power is reliant upon you. I cannot wait to get a chance to see all of you, and I'm completely excited about the adventure that lies ahead for us. Defenders, it is a pleasure to stand among you again, and I'm looking forward to what lies ahead. Thank you.